Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday, October 29th. Hurricane Sandy now making her northwest turn towards the New Jersey coastline here. Expected landfall in about 12 hours, and uh, the worst of her winds are still offshore here. You can see the oval of where the low level winds are moving the fastest is still offshore. Tropical storm force winds already extending from Boston down through still North Carolina, affecting the coastline with heavy rain, and water level rises already exceeding 4 to 5 feet areas with the coastline from New Jersey through New York and this is only going to get worse as the day progresses today. The storm amazingly is still strengthening despite moving into an area where mostly extra tropical processes dominate and tropically she's not sustaining herself on her own but convection in the core is now increasing a little bit and the winds are now becoming even more widespread in the hurricane force region of the core and the recon data is showing that the pressure at the center has dropped from 943 a couple of hours ago down to now 937.5 from the extrapolated values. That's a 6 millibar drop in nearly two hours and uh, she's bombing out as a typical nor'easter would, not as a hurricane would. Both processes kind of working together but it's mainly the baroclinic ones that are keeping her going. And now what's becoming very important in the short range is the fact that a lot of the strongest winds are starting to shift over to the northern semicircle of the storm. You can see the plane flying out right here from the latest pass, latest center fixes right here, and earlier they sampled some of the winds in the northern part. These were not this strong last night, and what happened was we had the strongest winds develop in the southwestern quadrant of the storm, and that's still where the strongest winds are. However, they're quickly shifting over because as the storm runs into the blocking ridge up to the north here, there's a big area of high pressure helping to redirect her northwest into the coast, and as this happens, it allows the winds on the southern sides to start wrapping around to the northeast quadrant and eventually the entire northern semicircle, and this is causing an increase in the winds. And the mesoscale models have been instrumental in helping us forecast cast this because a lot of them, here's the NAM from a courtesy of Dr. Ryan Maui's site showing an increase in the winds to over 100 knots at about 2,000 feet before this comes ashore. During the next six hours, the GFDL, HWRF, and some of the mesoscale models showing an increase of 20 to 25 knots in the northern semicircle just during the next six hours from right now. And uh, this is due to the process I mentioned as this is turning northwest, allowing these winds to rotate around the center. And this is bad because it comes into the onshore flow part of the circulation, which means the storm surge would be enhanced by these new winds coming out of the east, strengthening as they do come ashore. And as I said, water rise is already exceeding four feet in many areas, and the levels of Irene have already been surpassed in terms of the surge in many places. And this is expected to double, if not triple in some places, over that four feet. We're expecting 10 to 14 feet of surge up Long, up Long Island Sound and New York Harbor here due to all of these winds coming off of this long fetch off the ocean and this is just going to become progressively more dangerous and damaging during the afternoon and evening hours. This is the current sea surface temperatures, the position of Sandy right here coming off of the Gulf Stream. You can see the very warm tongue of water right here. This hasn't helped her as much as it would a typical hurricane, uh, given that her core is not necessarily where the strongest of the winds are right at the eye wall because the eye is still rather ragged. But it is helping bring uh, a general release of latent heat into the atmosphere due to the storm circulation and is just helping it intensify a little bit more as it comes in towards landfall. And apparently, the models from a few days out the European bombing this under 940 millibars ended up being correct and as amazing as this is uh, it did call this correctly that this would be one of the lowest barometric pressure storms we've ever seen in the northeastern United States. Pressure records are likely to get smashed as this comes ashore and uh, this is again of historic nature as we have talked about and very dangerous and folks should be uh, hopefully by now definitely prepared and hunkered down as it is uh, getting to that time where it is too late uh, to go anywhere. This is the National Hurricane Center wind field map showing Sandy's expanse of the wind field showing tropical storm force winds throughout this entire orange area just showing how large the storm is. Hurricane force winds they still show in the southwestern quadrant but these are quick quickly rotating up into the eastern and northern semicircle as the recon data has started to show and this is going to increase the onshore flow and the storm surge again coming into the coast and the storm will eventually be coming in towards the southern part of New Jersey so everywhere from Delaware Bay up through Long Island Sound and the Boston area going to get the strongest storm surge and this is probably going to be the most damaging part of the storm 
inland flooding also going to become an issue. The center of Sandy's still out here on the radar, not coming into view just yet, but lots of heavy rain bands and uh, very, uh, very heavily tropically and baroclinically forced rain here as all this tropical moisture comes piling around from the northeast on top of the cold air on the backside of the trough to the west. This is causing intense snows and blizzard warnings in western Virginia. It's amazing we're talking about snow on the backside of a hurricane, but it is occurring in the mountains here. So we have blizzard warnings to the west, flooding warnings to the east, and all of this uh, rain coming down is providing flash flooding. And uh, over the next few days, we're expecting six to eight inches additional accumulations over areas of Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, and Northern Virginia as this comes ashore ahead of uh, on top of what has already fallen. So this is going to become a problem every every branch of the scale for a storm of this uh, of this magnitude is becoming an issue winds coming on shore well in advance of the center means tropical storm force exposure is going to be many hours straight and as the water uh, soaks into the ground the trees get weaker they start falling power lines start falling power outages are already beginning and of course the storm surge and the winds along the coast of hurricane force we're talking 80 to 90 knots possible as the storm continues to deepen there is a buoy, or not a buoy, but a glider station down here that is slightly mobile. Uh, drifting around this area was showing winds over 115 knots earlier this morning. The National Data Buoy Center has said that this data could possibly be suspect as it is not quality controlled. However, it is showing a general increasing trend in this part of the storm as time goes on. So even if the absolute values are not necessarily accurate, the general trend appears to be upward in this section of the storm, again illustrating what we've seen on the recon data as the winds closest to the coast are starting to increase, and that is what we need to watch very carefully over the next several hours. Again, Sandy, about 12 hours from landfall coming into the southernmost part of New Jersey. Strongest storm surge coming right into the Long Island area, Long Island Sound, and New York Harbor here are going to be the hardest hit, and the strongest winds are likely to be right in the southwestern quadrant and the northern semicircle as this comes ashore anywhere from Delaware Bay up through Cape Cod, likely to get the highest winds as the this comes ashore and uh, hopefully people are prepared for the historic nature of this storm. I will continue to update throughout the day. You can check on my website tropicaltidbits.com for updates and information that I will continue posting as I can. I do have classes today but any free time I have I will be posting the latest information on my Twitter page and my Facebook page both of which you can find on my home website. So continue to check back and uh, please stay safe everybody. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.